high. We've got a request about uh, calibration validation for an actual model, but I think before we do that, it's better to <laughs> just step back and have a look what these actually mean or how it is done. So I have a quick illustration here um, um, about the process. So two main steps. One is the um, first is calibration, then the validation. So in calibration, what you do is you basically uh, or you use the data you observed to set your model up. So for example, you collected surveys like link uh, counts, turning counts, speed surveys, video footage. You measure uh, somehow driving behavior, probably from video footage or site observations. You collect signal data. Uh, you either get the log out of a signal controller or just record it and, uh, from a footage. And you also need to make assumptions and you need to make sure that um, you always record your assumptions. You can't really avoid doing this, uh, having assumptions, because you can't record and you can't survey everything. And it's also good practice to uh, keep using Wizim's default settings and only change them if you know what you are doing and if you can justify changing them. Um, a good example for this is probably in most of the cases we change, like the behavior on amber. So when the green, uh, when the signal is changing from green to red and you have an amber, usually it is expected to have vehicles to start stopping or to stop at that. But by default, Wizim uses uh, a different approach. So they let vehicles still drive on amber. When you do the calibration, you basically calibrate your model to network layout or network setup, lane arrangements, lane lengths, things like that, speed limits. You set up your turning counts if it's such a small intersection model. Hmm. Uh, set up link flows uh, or matrices if you have um, if you have a bigger model or more complicated one, you deal with root choices. So you set up like uh, costs for connectors or links if you need to. Um, and you also undertake a GH calculation to see how the observed flows compare the modeled flows. If you haven't heard about GH, this is a tool basically or a calculation that eliminates the discrepancy or the skewing effect of uh, low and uh, high vehicle volumes. So if you have 10 vehicles um, observed and if you have eight missing or uh, the difference is eight, then it's a big difference. But when you have 4,000 vehicles and you have eight vehicles or that's small, but also in previous case, so when you have that 10 vehicle and eight is missing, that's like, I don't know, 80% difference. Um, while if you have like 200 vehicles in a 4,000 vehicle, on a 4,000 vehicle per hour mainline flow, that's probably not a big of an issue. But again, GH deals with the, these differences. So it's better to use that than a percentage different, for example. That's what I try to say. And when you calibrate your model, <laughs> um, next up is validation. So in validation, you basically run the model you calibrated, where you set up everything in it. So the model is more or basically ready. And in validation, you take an independent data source that you don't or that you didn't use in the calibration process, um, ideally. <laughs> and that can include like something like queue lengths or delay survey when it's a small intersection or travel time survey if it's a network or a smaller area that includes like signals and all kinds of delays and queuing and everything. And when you do that, you basically make ensures that the model produces the results um, as it should be producing. So you calibrate it against observed conditions and then you validate it to an independent source, something you didn't use. And once that's ready, then you report all your findings, list all your assumptions, and then you have your base model. And again, it's important to check your local councils or local 
uh, guidelines that applies at your work or at your studies that you follow those requirements. Um, just a few examples. Um, in the UK, DMRB uh, has some guidelines about these. Uh, TFL, Transport for London has. <laughs> in America, probably highway capacity manual is a good starting point. But again, probably most of the councils have their own um, requirements or set of guidelines for uh, validation requirements and calibration requirements. In Australia, New South Wales uh, or TMR in Queensland also have um, their own guidelines. So those can be helpful to go have a deep dive on, on all these details and setups. So you can have a look at those. I aim to have a video about the actual process. Uh, I will keep it simple, of course. I can't go like super detailed. Uh, no one would watch a half a day long video. And uh, so yeah, keep uh, watch this space for that one. I think that's going to be as a starter, maybe an intersection model. So thanks for watching. If you like this content, just consider liking, subscribing, or check out my Patreon page for support. Thanks for watching.